We're still talking about design drawings prepared by the architect or probably the engineer. And in this um, set of slides, we'll look at the beam framing plan. So a, a beam is usually horizontal, although it doesn't have to be. It has a support probably at each end, and it might have some kind of load coming down in the middle or not. But a beam is different from a column, of course. In a beam framing plan, we show a plan view cut just above a floor level. And you will have a beam framing plan for each floor in the building. Plus, you'll have a foundation plan and a roof plan and some other stuff. And we're thinking about structural steel here. So in the beam framing plan, we're showing just items that relate to the, the structural steel framework. And notice here, uh, they've labeled the sizes of various things. And they've identified here's some bridging. And here are our grid line bubbles. Here's a foundation plan. This would probably be uh, have a sheet number starting with S for structural. Here's the foundation. Here's the roof framing plan. In a beam framing plan, we locate everything off these grid lines. And see all these labels? We label the sizes of all the beams. So remember, this is a design drawing. So this will this will be sent to the fabrication company and they will use all these labels, these wide flange sizes, to figure out how to make their fabrication drawings so they can actually cut and punch the physical steel. So they need, the fabrication shop needs all this steel labeling. This is the beam framing plan, so what's important in this drawing is, are the beams. That means the beams are going to be made with thick lines, and the other stuff will be thin lines, because we want to emphasize the beams. That's what this one is about. And when you're locating these beams, the, usually these single lines, uh, you know, a beam could be made out of a wide flange, or a tube, or even a channel sometimes. What uh, part of the piece of steel does this line represent? Well, according to AISC, that is the working line for the steel. That's where the dimensions come off the piece of steel. If this is a, a piece of wide flange beam, then that solid line is probably the center line of the wide flange. Here's a page out of a structural steel drafting book. Uh, talking about the working line. And there are various places you might choose as the working line depending on what you're doing. Here is a close-up of a beam framing plan where you can see the labels for the columns and the beams. Now if you think about how the beams actually connect to other things, and oh, and let's talk about what are these other things. Um, you sometimes hear people talk about beams, and sometimes they talk about girders. They're both beams. A girder is just a big beam, and um, there's no size limit on when you call it a beam and when you call it a girder. People often say when you have a connection like this, this joint here, uh, they call the big one the girder and the smaller one the beam. But you could use beam for all of those pieces of steel if you want to. Anyhow, these are great big pieces of steel in great big buildings, and uh, there are tolerances to everything. And so we have to allow some space when we uh, cope, when we notch this beam into this girder so that they can be fitted up and nothing will interfere and nothing will rub. We leave spaces. So in your design drawing, 
you do show a space, a gap between, uh, let's say, one girder and the beams connecting to it. And that gap is there because there really are gaps in this connection. If you think either it's not clear where the working uh, where the working line is for the thing that you're drawing, or you just want to be really unambiguous and, and clear, one thing drafters sometimes do, detailers sometimes do, is they'll, they'll draw just a little short segment of whatever it is they're representing in, in a double line representation over the top of the single line. So here you can see uh, in this one, in the middle row uh, far left picture, we're looking straight down on a wide flange and they're showing, the drafter is showing the middle of the wide flange is centered on the working line. In the second picture over, we're looking at the edge view of the flanges and so there again is the working line in the center of the thing. In the third picture over, we're looking at the the view of an angle iron and the drafter is trying to show this working line is at the back heel, the back surface, back corner of that angle iron. So you can do that sometimes. Now, open web steel joists, those are these truss looking things that are made out of lightweight, relatively lightweight steel um, that you see in the ceilings of all kinds of commercial buildings and warehouses and so forth. So we use a lot of these in commercial buildings. There's no standard way to represent those things. A lot of people will use, uh, well, either a thin line or a thin phantom line, maybe, uh, a thin uh, double line. It, it depends on what your office has as their standard. That's what you'll do. 